life that really matter. Would you believe me or would you think that I'm crazy? Fellow Toastmasters, it's true. I'm crazy <laughs> and <laughs> there are really only two days in your life that matter. The day that you were born is one of them and the other is the day that you figured out why. That is one of my favorite quotes by Brian Tracy about the two days that only matter in your life. Recently, I dragged a friend out on Christmas Day to see a movie that I would call a curious choice. And I call it curious because it's a movie about a young woman who goes on a hike for a thousand miles across the Pacific Crest Trail. And I thought, being a lover of cinema, how would it be possible to film such a thing and entertain an audience for an hour and 55 minutes about a girl going on a thousand mile journey, a hike through the wilderness? And I have to admit, it took some convincing of my friend to go with me, but the way I sold the movie was, hey, we get to see Reese Witherspoon half naked, we get to see her without makeup, with bruises, with blisters, Certainly, that has got to be worth the price of admission. And so we went to see the movie Wild. And I was actually quite wild about it, because it was a movie that I have seen, and one that <coughs> recently moved me in such a way that it inspired me for days afterwards to think about life and that second day that really matters why we're all here. After that movie, one of the scenes in particular left me thinking a ton. And it was a scene right before she embarks on her thousand mile journey where they show her signing her divorce papers. And at that moment, she makes the decision in her life to change her last name to Strayed, S-T-R-A-Y-E-D. And the symbolism as she explains it is more than just the fact that she strayed multiple times during her marriage, but that at that moment in time, right then in her life, she felt like a stray dog. <coughs> and it made me think for days afterwards, haven't we all strayed? And when I think strayed, I don't mean cheated on a partner, but haven't we all at one point or another, somewhere, somehow, someday, fallen off our life path? And so I really started to think, you know, when I was a child, I would go to the beach and I would do cartwheels. And I say cartwheels plural, because it was not five or 10, it was about like 500 or 1,000. I could spend hours on the beach doing cartwheels. I could stay up until three in the morning with friends or with my dad, having philosophical conversations about the meaning of life or staying up till three in the morning with college roommates making music or singing our hearts out and didn't feel an ounce of tired, even though it was 3 a.m. And somehow, somewhere, someday, I fell off that path and realized so many of us go through life in survival mode, where we just try to make it to the next day. We survive one day after another, and really don't figure out, for the most part, what fills our souls, what makes us happy. We don't follow our bliss. So this year, for New Year's Eve, I decided this would be my first New Year's where I would embark on my own solo adventure, just like the character in Wild. I declined all invites for parties, for food, for dinner, and I decided to create a little exercise for myself, which I will share tonight with all of you. For those that don't know, I finished my degree in psychology 15 years ago. And back then, I was very passionate about understanding the human psyche, understanding people, understanding why we were all here. And one of the people that really influenced me 15 years ago was a brilliant psychologist by the name of Nathaniel Brandon. He is a psychologist that in the field is largely known as a pioneer of research on self-esteem. And in the 90s, he wrote a fantastic book called The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. And I would recommend that book to anybody that's interested in this type of uh, the field of self-improvement. And obviously in this keynote address tonight, we don't have time to go all over all six pillars, even though all six are good. So I will share two of them with you that my exercise was based on. 
The first one is to live consciously. And we all hear it, to live in the moment, to enjoy the present, to embrace the situation. Nowadays, you even hear how multitasking is ineffective. You need to be present, focus on the here, focus on the now, lots of books. I'm sure you've all heard about living consciously. But it's very important to live consciously. And I'll give an example, one that's from the recent local news here, from New Year's Eve. In our nearby town of Sparks, there was a pedestrian that was hit by a driver. And it didn't end well. And it made me think, if either one of those, it didn't even require both, but it had one of those individuals, the driver or the pedestrian, been living just a tiny bit more consciously, that night, that accident could have been avoided altogether. One of my favorite moments in the movie Wild is where the main character shares a story that her mother would share with her growing up. And her mother would say, every day, every day, the sun rises and the sun sets. And you can choose to go out there and watch the sunrise. You can choose to go out there and watch the sunset. But whether you make that choice to go see the sunrise or the sunset doesn't matter. It's still going to rise and it's still going to set every day. So I hope everybody here can enjoy more sunsets and more sunrises in 2015. The second pillar of self-esteem that I want to share is to live more purposefully. And living purposefully, I know you're probably all thinking, it's a new year, a new start, a new me, time to set New Year's resolutions, time to set all kinds of goals. I know Dwayne was very interested tonight in all of our goals. And yes, it's important. If you're going to live a purposeful life, you have to have goals. You have to have a plan. The problem with most goals is that they are negative. Everybody wants to lose weight. And you know what happens when you want to lose weight? You find it again. <laughs> so it's a terrible goal, and most of them are negative. When I tried to sit down and think, what are my goals for 2015? You know, I wanted to buy no more shoes, no more perfume, try to save money. Like, my goals were all negative. Don't do this, don't do that, spend less, things like that. And then when you try and set these goals where you have a target date and you take them too seriously, then you get the other flip side of that coin where you feel like you're at work because you have to do that at work and it feels like a chore and it takes the fun out of it. So this New Year's, I did a little exercise and I'm going to share it with all of you, but it's kind of a private exercise. You're going to have to do it on your own time. It is a technique that Nathaniel Brandon created called sentence completion. And what you do is you sit by yourself and spend five minutes of uninterrupted time and complete some sentences. So for myself, the exercise I created was, in 2015, if I were to live more consciously, I would, dot, 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 and then you come up with six to 10 endings. Don't think about it, don't censor it. They could be wild, absurd, totally crazy, dream big, it doesn't matter. You finish the sentence with whatever naturally, organically comes to mind. And then the second sentence I did was, if in 2015, I were to live more purposefully, I would, and finish those with six to 10 endings. And so I did this on New Year's Eve thinking, okay, I'm gonna create a 2015. I'm curious, you know, like what's gonna come to mind? What do I want for my 2015? And I took it one step further because as I mentioned earlier in the speech, I'm crazy and realized that understanding the psychology of how we think, we do not think in words anyways. We think in pictures, we're visual creatures. So I decided from these sentence completion, what I came up with for my six to, two, six to 10 endings for these two, two sentences, I would create myself what I think my 2015 should look like. And as you can imagine, we're only five days into the year. So my pictures are mostly courtesy of Google Images. There is one picture that is of myself to connect me to my what some people call a vision board, but that's very 2014, so I will just call it <laughs> my 2015 best year yet. And so I took what, what came out of my sentence completion exercise and I created for myself my best year yet, and it's a poster that I'll pass around that shows from my sentence completion, if you wanna call them goals, it's a creative way to make goals, or this will be my Christmas card next year, except for I'll be in all these pictures instead of Google Images. And And so yeah, I'll pass that around, but that was my thing. So I inspire you to have the most conscious and the most purposeful 2015. 
And if you're short on ideas for Christmas cards next year, it's never too early to start. I started on New Year's Eve for next year's card, and I really hope that in December I can deliver a speech to show you all the things that I did this year to create an amazing best year for myself. Mr. Toastmaster.